May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. It is so good to have people around. Not a lot of people, but a couple people. So 20-something years ago, I had a trip of a lifetime when my college singing group got to sing as one of the entertainment acts on the QE2 cruise ship across the Atlantic from Southampton, England to New York City. Five days at sea for free, surrounded by nothing except water. And one day, one of us said something about being on the boat, and we were overheard by a sailor who corrected us. This is a ship, not a boat. A boat is what you get in if the ship sinks. <laughs> Did I mention it was the year Titanic came out? <laughs> a boat is what you get in when the ship sinks. Jesus and the disciples today are in a boat, <laughs> not a ship. The disciples in that boat with Jesus have abandoned the ship of the world. They've abandoned the ship of the way things have always been. They have abandoned vocations and families and status and the safety of just keeping your head down in favor of being on a boat with Jesus, their Savior, the Messiah, their Rabbi. And the storm is raging about them, and second thoughts abound. Why are you frightened? Jesus asked the disciples. Almost inexplicably, Jesus' pastoral care wasn't always so great. <laughs> they're frightened because they think they're about to die. They think they're about to drown because Jesus was sleeping and while he was sleeping, they did not believe that their lives mattered enough to God to be saved. Jesus is dumbfounded. Of course God loves us enough to save us. Of course he loves you enough to save you. Where is your faith? God so loved the world that he sent his son to be on our earthly boat. And in doing so, God gave us one more affirmation that creation is good, as we heard in the first reading tonight. The incarnation puts God at the heart of the storm. We do not worship a disinterested God who presides from on high and cares not for our little lives. We worship a God who loves deeply and personally. God loves you. God loves me. God loves each person in that boat. God loves each person in our boat. God loves us enough to be with us at peril of God's life and limb from the storm. And we, too, have chosen to give up on the ship of the world in favor of being in a boat with Jesus. Our faith is not in ourselves or in powers and principalities. It is not in a business or money or in the way things have always been. Our faith is in the cross. And that those very disciples, I wonder if they look up at that boat's mast and maybe they saw a cross outlined against the stormy sky. And if they did, maybe it didn't mean anything to them that night. But later, oh yes, later that cross meant something. That cross that says that when we follow Jesus, we suffer. And we are promised abundant new life. When we follow Jesus, we will die. And death does not have the last word. And so we get in the boat with Jesus, firm in the promise of the cross. And we leave behind the ship of the world. 
the ship of comfort and security. Now, some might say that the church itself is a crumbling ship of an institution. And as an earthly institution, maybe that's not wrong. But the boat of Christ, the boat of those who follow Jesus, that is not in any danger. So why are you frightened? What frightens you? There's plenty of good reasons to be frightened right now. Our earthly boat is suffering. We'll learn more tomorrow about how to better care for our creation, how to better talk and converse about climate change, how to heal the cracks in the boat so it stays watertight. The storm of the pandemic rages around us, putting our lives, our communities, and our churches at risk. What will we lose? How much longer will this go on? How much more will it cost in lives and jobs and just sheer exhaustion and loneliness? Well, I know you're tired. I'm tired too. We're in the same boat. The election looms. And every day, it is simultaneously possible for there to be good reasons to be frightened and that our fear is being used for malicious purposes to divide us. Both of those can be possible at the same time. Because we're, we are all in the same boat. We have to find ways of lovingly being in community with the rest of the people in this boat. Jesus and his disciples are all in the same boat. That means Judas is in the boat too. And Jesus didn't force Judas to walk the plank. This is not the story of Jonah, where Jonah realizes that the storm won't stop until the sailors throw him overboard. We have to find the way to act out of our faith and not out of our fear and keep everybody in the boat. Because every life in this boat matters to God and is loved by God. God loves us enough to promise that the storm will not rage forever. It will end. Peace will come. Just when we think we're about to be swamped for the last time, Jesus will cry out, silence, be still. And the wind and the waves obey. It's now almost 20 years since the first Vacation Bible School that I helped lead in California. And in the way that catchy Vacation Bible School songs just get into your brain like earworms and all of a sudden it's almost 20 years later and you can still sing them. There's one about Jesus stilling the storm that stayed with me since the summer of 2002. And if you want to Google it, there's a great video of adorable children singing it. So if you Google, I'm in the same boat with Jesus, Naples Christian Academy in Florida will, will take care of you and give you a, a warm and fuzzy feeling inside. We, we had a good time with it this week in the office. <clears throat> but the song, it, it had a blues bass line. I'm going to put my mask on so I can sing. So it had that blues bass line, the dun 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 Dun, 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 dun. And the refrain was, I'm in the same boat with Jesus, and that's where I want to be. I'm in the same boat with Jesus, no matter how rough the sea. Because Jesus won't let me sink, he proved it on Calvary. You're in the same boat with Jesus, no matter how rough the sea. And Jesus won't let us sink. He proved it on Calvary.